ever done something, well, stupid, something that you instantly regretted, something that you really, really, really wish had gone differently? Well, I can do you one better because chances are on November 28th, 2011, jewelry thief Nathaniel Coleman had a worse day than you. Welcome to Margs and Mayhem, where I tell you a true crime story and we drink. The following content may be disturbing to some, discretion is advised. If you choose to enjoy one of our themed margaritas, make sure you are of legal drinking age and have fun, but drink responsibly. I, as some of you diehard Margs and Mayhem fans may recall, toyed with the idea of doing what I deemed mini mayhems last year to, I would say, mixed reviews. But the truth is that my episodes don't really have a standard length anyway. For example, the episodes in January varied in length from like 20 minutes to 40 minutes. I just tell the story and however long it takes, that's how long it takes. So I think the way that I'm gonna do it from now on is that I'm just gonna tell the stories that I find interesting and the cases that I want to tell. If they last 10 minutes, great. If they last an hour, also great. And the good news is you can find the links of all of these episodes in the description box, as well as information about each episode. So if you don't want to listen to a shorter one, well, you can just skip it and delete it. I promise I won't be offended. I probably won't even know. I know that last year on an episode of Margs and Mayhem, I said that grenadine was just pomegranate syrup. And I have definitely made a few delicious drinks with grenadine. However, modern grenadine is usually just made these days with, well, you guessed it, corn syrup and sweeteners. So we're going to go a little purist with this drink and go for the straight pomegranate syrup. So here we go. This drink has, well, as usual, tequila. We'll go with two parts and then we'll add to that one part triple sec, one part lime juice, and one part pomegranate syrup. Super simple. We mix it all together really well in a shaker with ice. Shake, 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 shake. Shake your shaker. <laughs> and then we'll bougie strain as usual over fresh ice and enjoy. Mmm. Oh, for those of you watching on YouTube, what do you think of the new camera angle that I'm using to film mixing the drinks? And for those of you who are listening on podcast listening apps, I, I have been working on trying to make it so you're not just listening to me mix a drink for two minutes. So I hope you've noticed some improvements. Let me know what you think by sending me an email or dropping me a line on socials. Heck, while we're here, let's just plug them. I'm on all of the major social networking sites, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, oh, and TikTok. And on all of them, I'm Margs and Mayhem, except on Instagram, I'm Margs and Mayhem one. That's the number one. And remember, we're up and running on Twitter with daily true crime, this day in history facts and some general mayhem. For example, did you know that on this day in 2003, American actress Lana Clarkson was found dead at age 40 in a mansion in Alhambra, California. On April 13th, 2009, American record producer Phil Spector would be convicted for her murder. So head on over to Twitter, would you? And give me a follow. More fun to be had, I guess. Okay, enough stalling. I think it's fair to say that most people at this point know that it seems like crimes in Florida are a little extra. A little too much. For example, you might read a headline like this. Florida woman chases parents with 12-inch knife because they wouldn't take her to Outback Steakhouse. Or, Florida man tries to steal car from jail parking lot moments after being released for car theft. These headlines are, well, pretty common. There are entire Twitter accounts dedicated to this idea of Florida man and the strange, strange crimes that people in Florida tend to commit. So what's in the water in Florida? 
Well, first of all, Florida is a big state in terms of population and has a lot of people that move there that would be considered transplants. But it's a little bit more than that. You see, Florida is big on transparency, to a fault, really. Since 1909, Florida has been of the belief that government business is the people's business. All of it. So even though crimes like this might be happening all across the United States, in Florida, you have a very easy access to pretty much all governmental records, which is why we get some fantastic headlines like the ones I just read. And some pretty interesting stories like the one that we're all about to experience. Okay, y'all, here we go. Pronouncing things. I can do it. Located about two and a half hours northwest of Miami, Florida, Amukali is a city that was first established and settled by the Calusa people. Centuries later, it would also be inhabited by the Seminole and Makasuki people. Amukali actually means your home in the Makasuki language. Fast forward a couple of centuries and by 2011, Amukali is a small town of around 24,000 people. One of those towns where everybody pretty much knows everybody or knows somebody that knows that somebody. A town where coincidences seem to happen a little bit too often. More on that in a second. And by in a second, I mean right now. On Monday, November 28th, 2011, a 33 year old man named Nathaniel Coleman walked into Marilyn's Boutique. Marilyn's Boutique was a women's consignment clothing store that had been founded in 2004 by a Marilyn Garrido. Not sure if Marilyn is the co-star of this story or not, but since the business was listed as only having three employees, well, you got a one in three shot that it was Marilyn herself. On a side note, Marilyn's Boutique is sadly no longer in business and the site of the store is now a home to Zacateca Restaurante and Taqueria. Mmm, tacos. Anyway, back to November 28th, 2011. So Nathaniel walks into this consignment store, but he's on a mission. You see, he has several high-end pieces of jewelry that he would like to sell on consignment, consignment store. He found the perfect place. Or did he? You see, as the manager began to look at the pieces of jewelry, they started to look suspiciously familiar. Familiar because the manager was looking at her own jewelry. Yep. Puzzled, she excused herself politely and went into the back room to call her husband. Turns out, the manager had had her home robbed that very morning. She didn't even know that at the time. To her credit, she managed to keep Nathaniel in the store while her husband called the police and not to be one the wiser, or not suspecting anything, Nathaniel stuck around until the police arrived and, well, arrested him. Trying to sell the jewelry you stole to the person you stole it from. That's, that's just terrible bad luck, I think, for Nathaniel. In what the Miami New Times deemed as, quote, a cosmically doomed accident, Nathaniel was arrested and charged with three things. One, dealing with stolen items. Two, defrauding a pawnbroker, and three, grand theft of items between $5,000 and $10,000. Those were some nice pieces of jewelry. Lucky for Nathaniel, it appears that the case was dropped against him for this crime. And since nobody asked for it, and this is a pretty short episode, I'm going to give you a couple of more Florida man stories. A little more Bang for your buck today in this episode. In 2014, a Boca Raton man bit off the ear of his neighbor for refusing to give him a cigarette. 
Lucky for that guy, the ear was hanging on by a little piece of cartilage. They were able to save it. Also in 2014, a man was arrested and accused of assaulting his girlfriend with a banana. In 2013, a Vero Beach woman entered a bedroom to find her husband and his mistress asleep in bed. The woman pointed a rifle at them, threatening to kill them, but the husband managed to wrestle the gun away from her. Not finished with her rampage, she went out into the hallway and peed on the carpet right in front of the bedroom. She went downstairs, took a poop in the kitchen, and then caused a bunch of mayhem around the house, destroying Christmas ornaments and a bunch of other stuff. Sounds like she was pretty mad. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you have a chance to make this pomegranate margarita because it is refreshing. Next week, we head to France to talk about another one of the most famous art heists in history of what is arguably the most famous painting in history, the Mona Lisa. Did you know it was stolen? Honestly, I didn't until I started doing research for this episode. It's a story filled with some misplaced nationalism, some really bad security, and of course, you guessed it, mayhem. And because we're headed to France, I just have to do a Grand Marnier Margarita. For those of you who don't know, Grand Marnier is a much fancier and more expensive version of triple sec, an orange liqueur. Don't worry, you can buy it in smaller bottles. Speaking of which, I always put the ingredients for the next week's margarita in the description box. I challenge you this week, go to the liquor store and pick up the ingredients. Trust me, these crimes are much more palatable with something to drink. I'll see you next week. And remember, there are always alternatives to murder and stealing jewelry and trying to sell it to the person you stole from.